Ukraine are decisive in building up their future. That's Petro Poroshenko, Ukraine's new president-elect. The so-called Chocolate King won a decisive victory in Sunday's presidential election, a ballot that included 21 candidates. Ukrainians finally headed to the polls after months of deadly violence. The unrest centers largely on splitting allegiances between closer ties with the European Union and being pulled back into Russia's orbit. Turnout for Sunday's election was reportedly high, though not without turmoil. And among an international delegation observing the vote were Canadian MPs and a handful of Albertans. What did they witness? And what could this election spell for the future of Ukraine? And joining us from Kiev this evening is Linda Duncan, a member of parliament for Edmonton Strathcona, one of 13 MPs and 150 Canadian observers participating in the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. That's an international delegation reporting on Ukraine's election. Linda, good evening. I know you've been up a lot of hours. We really appreciate uh, having a chance to speak with you. Well, I appreciate you persisting. A lot of interest, of course, in Edmonton because we have a huge... Uh, uh, Ukrainian-Canadian diaspora, and uh, a lot of them came over to help monitor the election. Well, now that Ukrainians have, have had some time to digest the outcome of the presidential vote, uh, what, what was the mood like there today? Well, I, um, I of course, was in another uh, city monitoring the election and just came back at about uh, at noon today. Um, but everybody seems pretty upbeat. Um, I actually wandered down in the heat to the Medan to see what was happening, and there were a lot of people out and about in the streets and um, talking to everybody and selling their wares and uh, singing folk songs and uh, pretty upbeat. Um, a lot of us got together tonight uh, uh, representing the members of parliament that came over and just sharing their experiences. And apparently in uh, Kiev, uh, here in the capital where I am, uh, people were lining up to vote even before the polls opened and standing for hours in, it was very hot here, and it's at one point in time there was a terrible uh, uh, hailstorm. So people were bound and determined to participate. Um, I think one can probably honestly say this is the first really honest, uh, uncorrupt election that this country has experienced. And uh, they deserve to be upbeat because... Uh, they resoundingly across the country have chosen uh, Poroshenko as their president. Well, and, and, and he, he did appears to earn a, a clear majority in this. Do you feel, though, that Ukrainians are getting what they really wanted? Well, that's, of course, for them to decide. <laughs> he's only been elected, uh, you know, less than 24 hours, and he's, he's got a big agenda before him. Um, some of the people who observed uh, his press conference said, it wasn't like other elections that they had observed where everybody is cheering and, and so forth and ebullient. Uh, they said that it's actually very calm and, and serene and serious because, of course, he's got a lot of problems that he has to immediately tackle. Absolutely. Now, as an international observer, uh, how involved was your role? Oh, very involved. Um, we headed to the poll at 6 in the morning uh, because we had to drive an hour to another city. Let me try to say this, Dniproduzhink, and Zink, and uh, it's a very industrial area, a lot of metallurgical industry. Um, we were there for the opening of the poll. We got to our first poll at about seven in the morning, and uh, we attended and observed the vote at about fifteen polls, including a mental hospital. And uh, then we were there when they locked up and started doing the count, and so we were in our chosen poll. Uh, at the end, counting the vote until about 1.30 in the morning. And then we had to try to follow the box of uh, the ballots all the way back to the city hall, which ended up being quite the expedition. They had to transport them by bus, so <laughs> they were driving, driving all over town. We thought, oh, no, everything went so well. Now what? But eventually that box did show up. And uh, anyway, it was uh, very, very exciting to observe. Uh, we had lots of chance to chat with people because we did have an interpreter, particularly when it was a lockdown and we were doing the ballot counting. There were a number of representatives, as are in Canada, scrutineers for various candidates. Interesting to talk to them. And uh, the people who ran the polls were very, very uh, 
delighted that we were there observing. We were the only international observers in our city. And they just could not express enough enthusiasm for the fact that we put the effort in to make sure their election was honest. Well, you're talking about coming coming back after the election was over, and I was following some of your tweets, and uh, you're talking about traveling at 2, 2.30 in the morning, having to go through check stops where there were even tanks. How yeah. unnerving was that? It was a little unnerving. I don't know what was more unnerving, Michael. Uh, uh, check stops or the, the state of the highway. So I was thinking, maybe, you know, uh, Mayor Iverson would appreciate this. Uh, maybe we should send a few Edmontonians over to see the state of the roads here in Ukraine, and they might stop complaining. It was a little hair-raising on, on the highway, but we had a very good driver. And uh, a little unnerving to go through the check stop where they pulled us over, but they ended up being quite friendly, and they clearly were official military. So we managed to pull through okay. Uh, some of our other colleagues that were monitoring went through about five uh, check stops, many of which did not seem as official. But we were very lucky. I understand in one of uh, the other cities uh, towards further to the east, um, there actually was some gunfire. And uh, we had some at least one Canadian monitor in there. But they were bound and determined to continue. And so they got so the violence under control and they finished the poll and did the count. So hats off to uh, dedicated Canadian volunteers. Yeah, no, uh, back here at home, we're, we're seeing footage uh, from, from an airport where uh, Ukrainian troops are said to have engaged with separatist militants, R regardless of the yeah, election no, out it's outcome. Pretty darn dangerous, there. Yeah, now, does, does Ukraine <laughs> remain a, a powder keg? Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Um, that's, of course, I mean, it's up to the new president to try to unite the country again, and he's stated that he wants to try to bring a peaceful resolution. Uh, we wish him well, and I'm sure Canada will be there uh, backing him up in any way that we can. I, I, I don't think anybody wants a violent resolution of this dispute between Russia and Ukraine, least of all uh, the Ukrainians. And, and Linda, when do you return home? You're, you're on your way soon? Um, tomorrow morning I head back, but... Uh, I will be heading right away to Ottawa. Uh, Ottawa uh, Parliament is back in session, and I understand uh, the governor of the day have decided to impose midnight sessions on us until the end of June. So that's what I'm heading back to, so I have to try to get some sleep tonight. But I will be back in Edmonton this weekend. Well, we won't keep you from your sleep. Really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> I appreciate the call very much. Take care. All right. That's Edmonton Strathcona MP, Linda Duncan.